Welcome friends to Through the Bible. Mark chapter 14. I'm sure you have a Bible with you and if you do, kindly turn to the passage and follow as we read from God's word. Jesus here is predicting Peter's denial of him and also showing them the way he is going to suffer and die. Mark chapter 14 and verse 26 we read, "You will all fall away," Jesus told them, "for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee." Now Peter declared, "Even if all fall away, I will not." I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, "Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times." But Peter insisted emphatically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. Friends, we find here the first time that Simon Peter pledges his allegiance to Jesus. And he was sincere, I believe, of course he was. But he did not know his own weaknesses. That is the problem with many of us today. We don't know our own weaknesses. Peter was confident in his own ability to follow Jesus. But you know putting our trust and confidence in our own ability and efforts will usually lead us to failure. We need to learn to trust in God, in God's grace to empower us. Now listen to what happens as Peter puts his confidence in the flesh. Jesus continues to tell them how he was going before them into Galilee. He announces his resurrection after his death. He tells them that the sheep are going to be scattered. Yes, but he will go on into Galilee after his resurrection. He promises to meet them there. But Simon Peter couldn't let it go at that, you see. He declares that he will not be offended even if the others are. Here again we see that he just doesn't know what he is saying. Someone has said Simon spoke not knowing what he said. That's true. He had his mouth in gear, but his mind in neutral. We need to listen to Jesus before we speak. So our Lord prepares Simon for what is coming, and he lets Peter know that he is going to stand by him. My friend, the Lord will stand by you in times of trials and temptations. He will be there in your most desperate hour. Jesus certainly. was with this man Peter listen to what happens in mark 14 and verse 32 they went to a place called gethsemane and jesus said to his disciples sit here while i pray he took peter james and john along with him and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death he said stay here and keep watch with me gethsemane the garden of gethsemane must have been a very familiar spot to which the disciples came frequently whether it is the garden of gethsemane as it is known today we do not know but the location is really immaterial since they came here rather frequently it is a place that judas knew our lord never spent a night inside the city of jerusalem he went out to this place gethsemane literally means the place of the press perhaps it was at that place that the olive seeds were pressed and the oil was extracted but it is the place where jesus of nazareth the son of god who came to be the one who carries away the sins of the world would be pressed physically yes emotionally yes spiritually certainly you see this was the place when satan with all his forces would tempt jesus and dissuade him from doing the will of the father this was the place where the whole question of the sins being put upon jesus was at stake this is the place where jesus was not only pressed by satan and by the sins of all the earth the world sins Jesus was pressed within himself. Let's see how he responds. There are only 11 disciples now. He leaves out 
the other circle of eight, and then he takes Peter, James and John a step closer to him in this hour. He went to pray. The language indicates that Jesus faced a sore ordeal in the garden. This is a very intense word, meaning he was heavily distressed. Jesus faces here a travail of soul that was as great, if not greater than, the suffering of the body on the cross. Did he face the tempter again here in the garden? I think he did. I must be very frank and say that we can only stand here on the fringe. There are mysteries in this garden that we cannot understand. I think it is so important for us to understand that Jesus went through all kinds of suffering. I'll go with him through the garden, the song says. I'm sorry, friend. We can't do that. You don't know how weak and stumbling we really are. I can't go with him through the garden, but I will stand at the edge and watch him pray and learn from him. He asked us, just as he asked the disciples those days, to pray. Pray so that we will not enter into temptation. Verse 35. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and he prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. I, Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup away from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Mark says that Jesus prayed that the hour might pass from him. It was not death that Jesus dreaded, but rather the hour of the cross. That moment when sin was to be put upon him, he was made sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 clarifies. Mark makes the hour and the cup synonymous. Listen to the writer to the Hebrews, what he says in Hebrews 5 verses 7 and 8. The writer says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Now he returns to the place where he had stationed the three disciples. Verse 37 Then Jesus returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, Are you sleeping? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body, the flesh, is weak. The three disciples were not at all alarmed. In fact, they could sleep through all it. This man, Peter, wasn't even disturbed that he was going to deny Jesus, his master. He should have been watching and praying, isn't it? But he just went off to sleep. Watching and praying is the way for us to avoid temptation. Even today, we must learn this secret. Do not put confidence in the flesh, but learn to depend through prayer on Jesus. We are watching him pray, but we are learning how to pray. Praying the way Jesus prayed. Though he was God, he did not depend upon himself, but trusted and did the Father's will. Now you'll notice that Jesus goes back and he repeats the first prayer. Mark 14 verse 39. Once more, Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. And the disciples went to sleep again. Mark 14 and verse 40 we read, When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. They had no explanation for their failure. We certainly learn here that the flesh cannot be trusted. Mark 14 and verse 41 we read, Returning the third time, Jesus said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Apparently, 
there was a lapse of time in here so that they had a brief sleep before Jesus was arrested. Let us read about the arrest of Jesus in verse 43. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared with him. A crowd armed with swords and clubs were there. They were sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders. Now you will see that they have come out to do the thing that they said they would not do. They had said, not during the feast days. Chapter 14 verse 44 reads, Now the betrayer had arranged a signal. He had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Here we have recorded one of the acts of treachery that is so sad. It is foul and loathsome. You see, Judas knew our Lord's accustomed place of retirement, of rest and repose. And he led the enemy right there. A kiss is a badge of love and affection. But Judas used it to betray someone he should have loved. This makes this act even more repugnant. Incidentally, we learn here that our Lord in his humanity looked no different from other men, did he? He needed to be identified in a crowd. Judas was willing to do this treacherous act. You will notice that Judas calls him Master. He does not call him Lord. No man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. That's 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 3. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. This marks the moment that Jesus was delivered into the hands of sinners. He yields himself now to go to the cross. Simon Peter attempts to come to his rescue. We read in verse 47, Mark 14 and verse 47, Then one of those standing nearby drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion? said Jesus that you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Jesus points out that this fulfills prophecy. If these people had believed their own scriptures, they might have hesitated or even changed their minds. We read in verse 50, Then everyone deserted him and fled. As we suspected, it was Peter who cut off the man's ear with his sword. John also tells us that the man's name was Malchus. Simon Peter was a pretty good fisherman, but he was also a swordsman. He had intended to get the neck, but he missed it and he got the ear, I believe. They all forsook Jesus and fled. This is fulfillment of prophecy. Then we have this incident of a certain young man. Mark 14 verse 51 says, A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. There has always been speculation as to who this is. Some think it may have been the Apostle Paul. Some think... It may have been John Mark. Personally, I think it is more apt to believe that it was John Mark. Mark was there and Mark was someone who listened and wrote Peter's record of the life of Jesus Christ. Friends, as we bring this portion to a close, let me ask us a few questions. Questions concerning the tough times of life. We all go through trials and temptations. Suffering in this sense is inevitable. Suffering attacks us in different forms and comes through various means. It is not what happens to us that really matters, someone said. What really counts is what we do with what happens to us. Are you going through a difficult time right now? You are pressed, just like Jesus was pressed in this garden of Gethsemane, the place of press. 
pressed by sin your sin pressed by satan evil forces seem to be attacking you pressed by people evil people people like those who came to seek after jesus and put him on trial friends we can learn today that the way out and the way over these temptations is the way of the cross the way of submission to god's will notice jesus his answer was father take away this cup this bitter cup can i move on from this hour of suffering but he quickly went on to say not my will but your will be done friend that is the secret to be triumphant over trials it is submitting to god's will for our lives also the way we overcome trials and temptations is not only submitting to god's will but simultaneously determining not to put confidence in our own flesh peter boasted i will never let you down i will follow you and soon he discovered he couldn't even stay up and pray with jesus we need to learn from jesus the art and craft of trusting god through travailing prayer waiting upon the lord prayer is an enriching experience and an empowering event the more we wait upon the lord god gives us grace to endure and power to overcome that is the secret there is a getsemane a getsemane in your life a getsemane in my life mm-hmm.